Okay, before we uh, finish our final segment there, Andrew Mogeson, I will make my picks for tomorrow's election. As you know, I was 10 for 10 last year in my picks, and I predict it's going to be Terry Turner, and then the other one is going to be razor close. I'm going with Suzanne Atwell. I think it's going to be really, really close between her and Cara Julio. I'm going with Atwell. All right. Now, Andrea, uh, you talked about bringing in Carlton Fields. What did that do, what effect did that have on your, your adversaries when, when you brought in a bigger firm to help you? It, it was imperceptible. I mean, I expected them to change their attitude a bit because I expected that their plan to exhaust my resources would probably be derailed and not a bit. It's, it, everything stayed the same. There was wow. no difference, no variation. I, I will say, um, kind of as an aside, this being such a fiasco, uh, there was a lot of comedy along the way as we were doing it, and I think that um, my colleagues from Carlton Fields were kind of shocked at how much comedy there was as far as how nothing went the way things go, the whole way. What, what, was, what was maybe one of the funniest things that happened during the lawsuit? Uncovering the um, Snow White and the Seven Dwarves code names and, you know, how they had assigned code names. The liaisons had, had very wisely emailed to each other well, someone might intercept our emails. So we're going to use code names. Let's do it this based like on Tony Snow White. Soprano. <laughs> Snow White and the Seven <laughs> Dwarfs. And then they gave the key on their email. So, of course, they gave the key like before the code? they started using it. So the code like was... Like this commissioner is sleepy and this one's grumpy, bashful. And, and then they, of course, had... Well, who is grumpy? Fun, I don't even remember. <laughs> they had all sorts of fun suggesting candidates for different uh, <laughs> positions in that. And when that came out, it, it was just... We were rolling on the floor laughing. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? You know, who does this? It was very, uh, that, there was some comedy there. There was, there was comedy all the time with the things people were saying to each other. Because when people send email, they do not think someone else is going to be reading it. How but can you work for cool. the government and use government email and not know that? Well, don't forget, we had requested their private email because they elected not to use their government email for oh, government business. That's right. So we They're were able to collect their personal email. Because they were discussing so were government they, business. Correct. And so... But but still, if you, in the same venue to give the code and then use to give the key and then use the code doesn't seem very wise in any case. So there was definitely some comedy there. But I know the folks at Carlin Fields were unaccustomed to the unpredictable reactions of our opponents, the unpredictable behavior of the subjects. I mean, it was pretty pretty shocking, and nothing went the way things go. I can tell you, Andrea, you're not going to get me. I have I have the private emails of a lot of public officials and I am very careful never to discuss their public business with their with their private email so when you when you get with some of these you're not going to get me I, I promise you. <laughs> I'm not looking to get any and that's another thing that had, had a lot of comedy to it is that there was this constant game going on of what are they really after? Oh, okay. So people would call Did they think up. you had a political agenda? Oh, yeah. People thought we were working for these folks and those folks and these folks. And there was this constant guessing game because nobody could actually believe that there were a couple of purists that actually wanted the government to function properly and would put themselves out to make that happen. Everyone thought that there had to be some kind of personal gain, either for Lorenzo, for myself, for Barfield, who um, is the legal consultant working on this. And, and there never was. And we knew that there wasn't. So watching people try to figure out who they work for, or what it is, was very amusing. So the taxpayers have to pay Anderson, the city attorney. They have to pay all the attorneys that were appointed to represent the city commissioners. They have to pay Carlton Fields. They have to pay you, and they have to pay Anthony Lorenzo now. And here is well, they don't pay Lorenzo. The oh, really? Doesn't get paid to do this. They they don't. He wanna, gets nothing. They no, he gets nothing. Wow. They don't pay citizens to sue them to comply. What, what the fee shifting is about is that uh, Anthony Lorenzo was a hotel clerk when this started. He does some other work now, but he's not a rich man. He's a regular citizen. He's a working class guy. And, and people who are working class or not working should not have limited access to their public records. They shouldn't be able to be blown off by their government based on the fact that the government has resources to outpace you if you litigate. So that's why the fees are shifted to encourage attorneys to take the cases because Lorenzo is not in a position to right. pay for the corrective activity, but he is a guy who's interested in making the government function well. And that's not something that we're going to limit to the rich. So, you know, working class people, non-working people have the same opportunities as wealthy people to contest their government. That's the point. 
So Lorenzo doesn't get anything financially, which is another reason people were always looking for the wow. on the sly motivation. But there isn't right. one. There never was. Is he going to we run for commissioner or something? He doesn't right. even live in Venice, right? Right. No. La la last question, real quick. Um, what do you think the final number is going to be on this? How much is this going to cost the taxpayers of the city of Venice? you have any idea? No idea. That is completely up to the judge. Um, the speculation is alarming. I couldn't speculate the way other people have been speculating. I do know that my opponents um, were under contract. They're paid whatever they're paid. They're going to be approved by the city or not approved by the city. That's between them and their client. Um, we're prevailing party status. That means the judge is going to decide what fees were reasonable and necessary. Um, we do have an opportunity to seek a multiplier. That does not mean we'll get it. Um, we'll make argument for that, and it'll be totally up to the judge. But one thing everybody's forgetting is, you know, we went in on April 1st, April Fool's Day, ironically, to set status for the fee hearing, and we had suggested doing it in, you know, May or June. And the city, Bob Anderson, took the position that he needs to do all this discovery, and he will need significant time, and he's going to, you know, pry into this. And we got the hearing set in September. And it's kind of interesting because Bob Anderson will be continued to be paid wow. on an hourly or contract basis, whatever his agreement is. Well, we're out of time, but for that reason, Bob Anderson is most definitely, easily, our Weasel of the Week this week. Andrea, thank you for coming on the show. Thanks for having Keep me. Keep up Ron. the good work. Thank you. That's it for Cloud 941. See you next week.